Assalamu alaikum barakatuhu. Hürmetli abonelerimizi, nabatteki webinar dikimizi devam etti. Bugün üniversitemizi, Malazya'da çalışan Üniversite Sultan Zainal Abidin de namlengen üniversite hakkında boladı. Bugün de mehmallerimizi Dr. Malik Amanov ve Anwar Makafi bilen bolu botadı. So, hello our, our partners. It's hello, good. hello. Uh, so today uh, we're gonna have our next uh, webinar about uh, Malaysian University. So uh, we can start to talk about it. So I'm gonna pass the speech to Doctor, uh, no, Doctor Mister uh, Faris to start talking about uh, MJS study. Okay. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum and uh, very good afternoon everyone. Welcome again to our study in Malaysia webinar session. So uh, this is our 10th uh, session with the Malaysian universities. So uh, here we are quite um, grateful to have a uh, representative from uh, University Sultan Zainal Abidin, uh, UNIZA. So uh, today we do have uh, Mr. Anwar, welcome Mr. Anwar from uh, UNIZA. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Anwar is the uh, director of the International Center of UNISA. And here we do also have uh, Dr. Malik Amonov. Welcome, Doctor. Okay. Dr. Malik is the uh, lecturer, faculty of uh, medicine uh, from UNISA. Yeah, he's from Uzbekistan. I think, I believe he's been in Malaysia for quite some time already. Yeah, so later after this, we can, you know. Uh, ask some question about his experience in Malaysia's uh, study and also living in Malaysia. Okay, so uh, uh, okay. Before that, I'll start to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Faris. I'm from Education Malaysia Global Services (EMGS). Uh, EMGS is the ag agency under the Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. Our function as the uh, gateway for international students to come and study in Malaysia. And also, EMGS also is the uh, global promotion arm to promote study in Malaysia brand. Okay, to start our program today, let me begin with uh, some uh, with a presentation about study in Malaysia. Why international students, especially from uh, Uzbekistan, should consider Malaysia as your next study abroad destination. So um, basically, we do have uh, several reasons, okay, for the students, for international students, uh, to consider Malaysia as your study destination. So um, looking at the poster here is very beautiful poster about the uh, Malaysia. We do have uh, Mount, Mount Kinabalu, one of the uh, tallest uh, mountain in Malaysia, and also here the picture on the right is our beautiful tropical island and mostly located in uh, East Coast of Malaysia, which is uh, Terengganu, where the University uh, Uniza are located. So uh, the first reason for students to choose study in Malaysia is that we offer a world-class uh, and quality education. So uh, for example, uh, let me brief you, uh, Malaysia, in Malaysia, we do have about uh, eight universities in the world top 200 US ranking, okay? Uh, that's a ranking about the university. Besides, uh, some of our universities also achieve a good ranking by subject. We do have a uh, university in uh, top 20 by subject and also top 50 by subject. For example, uh, engineering, theolo theology study, and uh, religious study, and also hospitality and uh, tourism management. Okay. We do have uh, some of the, the universities that achieve a very good ranking in this uh, field of study. The second reason is uh, affordable. So meaning Malaysia, we offer the quality education at the affordable price. So if you can see from the chart here, um, if you compare the cost to study at public and private university in Malaysia are way cheaper compared to other study destinations. It just costs about 4,400 US dollar for the public university per year. And for the private university, it's around 4,870 per year. And in terms of affordability, affordability ranking, Malaysia ranked as the world's second most affordable city for the students. This is based on the QS ranking. So this is the uh, price comparison if you want to buy food or if you want to rent an apartment in Malaysia. 
So we take the example of the price of a uh, Mac meal on average in Malaysia, it just costs about 3.65 US dollar, which is the uh, cheapest among other study destination. And in terms of the rental, 100 square meters rental apartment at the capital city, so it costs about uh, 1,026 US dollar per month. But if you go to a place outside the city center, the cost uh, much cheaper. Okay, and the third one is a learn English. Malaysia ranked as the uh, as the uh, third, okay, most uh, proficient English country in Asia in terms of uh, English uh, proficiency. So for international students, if you come and study in Malaysia, you no need to worry to communicate with the locals because uh, most, of, uh, most of us understand and can communicate English. For example, if you want to ride a public transportation, if you want to buy food at a supermarket and everything to communicate with the locals, so you can just use uh, English. So it shouldn't be an issue. And then uh, most of the university here in Malaysia also use English as the uh, main uh, medium of instruction. So the fourth reason is the modern and progressive. So for example, here from the picture here, I show you this is the beautiful skyline of our city center Malaysia. So you can see here a lot of uh, modern and new skyscrapers. The first picture here is the Petronas Twin Tower, the tallest twin tower in the world. And soon we are going to have another two more towers, okay, which is uh, PNB Tower and Razak uh, Exchange Tower. So Malaysia is quite a um, fast developed country and modern and also progressive. On your right, you can see some of the uh, our local company, uh, Petronas for example, uh, which is one of the world largest oil and gas company in Asia, the world best, the world best low cost Airline. So we do have uh, a lot of international students after they graduated, they work at this, uh, these multinational companies. Uh, multicultural societies, so you can see here in Malaysia, majority of us are Muslims. So for the students from Uzbekistan, you don't have any issue to find the halal food, to find the mosque, mosque is everywhere, halal food of course, everywhere. And also, we also are very mixed, which is uh, majority are Malay, 67%. We do also have Chinese, India, and uh, other races. So, uh, yeah, if you come to Malaysia, you can find and uh, meet these people from uh, different races, different religion. You can taste uh, different kind of food. You can experience different kind of practice. In terms of international students also, we do host uh, students from more than 150 countries. So you come and study in Malaysia, you can make friends with uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the students from uh, different countries. So it will bring you international exposure, which is uh, very important to you. After you graduated, you work at this big multinational company, at least you already have, you know, multinational uh, experience with uh, other countries. And with Malaysia also a very dynamic lifestyle for the student outside the classroom. For example, uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, beautiful uh, places. You can see from the picture here, the National Park. In Malaysia also, we have uh, one of the world's most uh, beautiful tropical islands. So you can come here, just you know, enjoy, relax at the beach, or you can go to the Mount, Mountain National Park for a hiking or spend some weekend here. We, uh, most of the international students during the semester break or during the weekend, they will have a, a short trip okay, to go and visit all these uh, beautiful places. And also we do have a strategic location at the heart of uh, Southeast Asia countries. So it's just about you know, two hours to Bali, in Indonesia, one of the world famous island. And if you want to go to Phuket or Krabi, so it just takes about one or two hours only. And we are quite peaceful also in general and we are quite peaceful we are free from all those uh, natural disasters, earthquakes, volcanoes, and everything. And we are political, politically uh, stable countries. So yeah, so the student will find a uh, good time here when you come and study in Malaysia. So um, that's all about the presentation of the study in Malaysia. And uh, moving forward, I will play you just a short video, okay, about the student's experience in Malaysia. So um, this video was shot in Redang Island, located in Terengganu, one, one of the... Uh... <laughs> 
Okay, that's all the presentation about uh, study and living in Malaysia. So uh, we can now we move forward to our next agenda. I will give the floor to Mr. Anwar to give a presentation about the universities and also to help us to understand more about the university. Yeah, welcome Mr. Anwar. Okay, thank you very much Faris and study point. Uh, welcome Dr. Malik from our other campus downtown. My name is Anwar McAfee. I'm the director of the International Center at UNISA, responsible for recruiting undergraduate and postgraduate students and making sure their experience here is a valuable one while they study with us. Uh, I like the video you showed just now because that's our, that's our, not backyard, that's our front yard. That's one of the closest islands to our, our campus and our students get the opportunity to go there on the weekends, it's very accessible. Uh, 20 minutes by car to the jetty and then less than an hour to the island and you're there in paradise for a few days. Um, I'd like to start by, by going through some slides about the university so that our listeners get an overall uh, picture of who we are, where we are, what we offer, and, uh, and then we can open it up to questions and I know Dr. Malik will be able to uh, contribute as well. Uh, because uh, he's from Uzbekistan and he'll have a, a certain perspective that will, will help the students um, understand what it's really like to be here, where we are at UNISA. So we are University Sultan Zainal Abidin. We have a 40 year history. In 1980, we began as a college, a religious college, an Islamic college in the state of Tringanu. And in 2006, we upgraded to a university. Our name at that time was University Darul Iman because that is the name of the state we are in, Tringanu Darul Iman. But we reverted back to Sultan Zainal Abidin as our name in 2010. And that's where we are today. University Sultan Zainal Abidin, named after one of the, uh, uh, one of the sultans in the state from the royal family in Tringanu who is very concerned about education, Islamic education and knowledge in general. Here we have a map of Peninsula Malaysia, yellow Peninsula Malaysia on the left and you can see the shaded state of Tringanu on the right hand side. That's the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia and in Tringanu uh, we are located in three different campuses. We're approximately 500 kilometers away from the capital, Kuala Lumpur, but with modern roads and a good transportation network of buses and planes, it can take five hours to drive or less than one hour to fly here. Okay. This is our chancellor, the Sultana of Tringanu. I will not go through who is our pro-chancellor, vice-chancellor now, uh, senior management. I'll show you the three campuses. We have in red the Gombedak campus, which is the main campus, and that's where I am right now. We're located just north of Kuala Tringanu. The medical campus is downtown Kuala Tringanu, and that's where Dr. Malik is right now. 
And then in the north of Tringanu, we have Basut campus. And if you look offshore on the map, you can see islands. You can see Pulau Perhentian, which is Perhentian Island. That was in the slides that Farish showed us earlier. And you can see in red, Pulau Redang. That is the island that was in the video just now. You can see it's just off the coast from where we are. This is our main campus, 350 acres, Gombadak campus. We have a mosque at the entrance to the campus. This is an important feature of our university. We are, of course, open to people from all walks of life, all religions, uh, but we are an Islamic university. We make sure that there is an Islamic foundation in most of the programs we offer. And the mosque is central not only to the university, but to the community. It is a community mosque open to the public. The main road is right in front of the mosque. And so this is one excellent way that the university engages on a regular basis with the community. It's also an excellent place for our students that live on campus from all over the world, get to meet with the local community on a regular basis through the mosque. Uh, the mosque is at the front and at the back you see all those buildings in the picture. Those are all our campuses, our classrooms, our administrative buildings. And on the right hand side, the red roofed buildings, that is our on campus hostel accommodation for approximately 5,000 students on this campus. The medical campus downtown where Dr. Malik is now holds only the medical faculty and it is located directly opposite the general hospital the largest hospital in Tringanu. And then in the north of the state, we have our newest campus, the Basut campus, a thousand acres with three faculties on it at the moment. We have 11 faculties at the university. The, the largest faculty in terms of student numbers and faculty members is the Faculty of Islamic Contemporary Studies. Then we have the Faculty of Economics and Management Sciences, Faculty of Law and International Relations, Faculty of Innovative Design and Technology, Faculty of Languages and Communication, where the two areas of study are English and Arabic, Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Health Science, Faculty of Bioresources and Food Industry, Informatics, Applied Social Science, and our newest faculty, Pharmacy. Now, all of these faculties offer study at the level of degree or bachelor degree, master and PhD. So if you wanted to come and join us for a undergraduate degree, you have the option of continuing on with your master's or PhD. The admission requirements for undergraduate programs are, this is I believe, this is the um, Uzbekistan uh, standard that we took from MQA. They call it the Diploma of Professional College or the Diploma Academ Lysen. I believe those are two, two standards in uh, Uzbekistan. So if you have those diplomas, you're allowed to enter the degree program. In addition to that, you need to have an IELTS English language score of five, at least five, or a TOEFL internet-based test score of 45, or the Malaysian University English test score of three. At the moment, we require these English language scores, but we hope in the year ahead to have up and running our English language program on campus, where if you do not meet these English language requirements, but the faculty accepts you, you will get a conditional offer letter to join us, study English at UNISA first, when you get your IELTS or TOEFL or MUET score, then you enter the faculty. And we have uh, brochures that give more details on faculty requirements beyond this. These are the general requirements. Uh, faculty programs have slightly more specific requirements based on whatever area you want to go into. So for example, the Faculty of Languages, if you want to take Arabic at the degree level, then you have to show that you have completed Arabic in your uh, diploma or that you have capacity in Arabic. If you want to take Islamic studies with us, you have to show that you have achieved a certain proficiency in Arabic because those programs are conducted mostly in Arabic. If you want to study English, you want to do your bachelor in English language studies, you have to have a higher IELTS TOEFL or MUET score to get into that program. 
If you were interested in postgraduate study with us, if you want to do your master's, you require a bachelor's degree. And we look at the grade point average of that bachelor degree if it's available. And we require 2.75 or better. However, if your grade point average is lower and you have work experience, that will also be sufficient to apply and be accepted to study masters with us. Most of our master programs are by research. The same is true of doing your PhD with us that you would require a master's degree, right? And in addition to holding the degrees, you also need English language requirements. Now, if you were to do your master's or PhD with us in Islamic studies, it can be conducted in Arabic. You can write your thesis in Arabic. And if you do it that way, you do not need the English language requirement, okay? Here is a general look at our fees. These are in US dollars, although we publish our fees in the local Malaysian currency, Ringgit Malaysia. This is an approximate uh, calculation based on the current exchange rate. For undergraduate programs, you can see two columns, semester one and subsequent semesters. Semester one is a higher fee because it, in, it incorporates two additional things. One, it's the registration and orientation fee. And number two, that includes the cost of on-campus accommodation for one semester. Subsequent semesters, you see, for social science programs, it is only 1,250 USD for each semester of study at the undergraduate level, social science programs. If you want to stay at the hostel, that can be arranged in subsequent semesters. First semester is guaranteed. Second, third semester, if you want to stay, you just apply and usually there is space for undergraduate students. It's not a problem. If you are taking a program that is in science and technology based fields, the fee is slightly higher because the costs of running the program are higher. If you are in health science, lots of uh, labs and chemicals are used, the fee is 1,625. And if you are interested in our medical program, the MBBS, it is 9,000. 275 USD per semester, and the program runs for 10 semesters. Um, accommodation is provided in semester one for all undergraduate students, and the fee is built in. If you want to stay on campus after semester one, it is approximately three US dollars a day to stay in the uh, twin sharing room. And the fees for postgraduate studies are very reasonable. Some of the most reasonable fees in the country. If you look at social science, you'll see it is 625 USD per semester. Science-based programs, 1,018. And medical-based programs, 1,250 USD per semester. There are two semesters in the year at the postgraduate level. The first semester runs September to January, six months, and the second semester runs February until August. These fees apply equally for master program or PhD program by research. They are identical at the master and PhD level. At the bottom, you will see master by mixed mode and coursework. These fees are a little bit higher. These fees are for the entire program. We have law, Islamic finance, information technology, and business administration. And these programs run at a fixed time. So there is a starting date and an ending date to the semester for the mixed mode and coursework. However, for the research programs, master by research or PhD by research, we accept applications throughout the year and we are open for registration throughout the year. So even though we have two fixed semesters, students can come in at any time during that semester if they are taking the research mode. Now, currently with COVID-19, there are some changes to the way we operate on campus. For undergraduate programs, we are not accepting applications at the moment, 
because our semester is scheduled to start in September. And usually the cutoff time for applications is at the end of May. So we're already getting close to the enrollment time. However, we were open earlier in the year for applications. For postgraduate, by research, we are still open for applications. We are still giving out offer letters and we are switching to online registration. Meaning, if you are sitting at home right now and you are interested in doing your master's or PhD with us, you can apply online. If you get an offer letter, you can uh, complete the necessary paperwork to apply for a visa through EMGS. Although the process will not be 100% complete now, and we, we're not encouraging anyone to travel now, still, you can complete enough of your visa that the university will accept you for registration. And we will ask you to do your medical screening in your home country and provide that to us. And with that, we will register you and you can start communicating with your supervisor. And then we will complete the visa process, complete the medical screening process once things get back closer to normal and travel is allowed. But students are registering and they're starting their work online as we speak. We have 11,500 students. That's a mixture of local and international. Most of the students are undergraduates, 7,000 in the bachelor program, 2,600 in diploma for our local Malaysian students. We offer diploma and we also have a medical foundation program with over 100 students. For postgraduate students, we have 1,700 plus postgraduate. The majority of those are international students. We have over 1,000 international students from almost 40 different countries. We have 18 international students in the undergraduate programs, and the balance, almost 1,000 others, are in the postgraduate programs. So we're very keen on postgraduate, and we're really looking forward to increasing undergraduate students from Uzbekistan and the region. We have nearly 2,000 staff at UNISA, 647 are the academic or teaching staff, 50 of which are international. Uh, Dr. Malik is international staff, I am an international staff, and we have 48 others on campus. We offer 24 diploma programs, but the diplomas are only for Malaysian students. We have 32 bachelor degree programs in the 11 faculties I mentioned and we have 45 postgraduate programs master and PhD plus the coursework uh, programs here's a quick look at a few of the buildings on campus this is the Gombadak campus this is our main hall which is used for graduation exams talks by invited guests and speakers, large gatherings where the vice chancellor or people would like to meet with the student body. Next to it is a smaller hall that still accommodates hundreds of students that we use regularly for workshops, large seminars, conferences, exams, also guests and uh, lectures. This is our one of our academic blocks in the center. It has a theater that holds several hundred students. And then on the wings on the side are all the classrooms. This is the accommodation I showed you on our Gombadak campus. Every campus has their own accommodation. Even the medical campus downtown has accommodation walking distance to the campus. This accommodation is on campus. You can walk from this accommodation to the classrooms, to the libraries, to the faculties in two or three minutes. Everything is easy to get to here on our main campus. We also have our medical center. We of course have a medical faculty and many of the teaching faculty at the Faculty of Medicine also work in our clinic, work in our specialty center. And we are currently building a hospital, a teaching hospital on this campus. This is our UNISA mosque that I showed you at the beginning. We have strong internet connection, wireless and wired throughout the campus, available for all students and staff. Our library is a spacious modern library with over 100,000 books, but of course books is not the way to go now. Now everything is online. So our library also provides through their website a very extensive collection of journals that, can, that are subscribed to, giving access to 
lecturers and students to many, many journals throughout the world. And if there's any journal that's not available, we request it from the library and they will be able to subscribe uh, to it. And if you are a student with us, but you're in your home country, you come here for a while, then you go home, you still get access to all these resources online as long as you are an active student with us. These are some photos of areas to relax inside the library. We also have an observatory, a planetary observatory just north of campus. This is on, on the coast right next to Redang Island. We also have a camp there where students go for outdoor activities, uh, swimming, water confidence, kayaking. It's all part of the university. And on the hill right by the coast, we have this observatory where we go for noon moon sightings. Undergraduate students participate in lots of activities, sports on campus, archery, futsal, football, kayaking, cycling, also lots of involvement with the local community. And we have mobility programs where students come from other countries to spend time at our university. Every year we have a group of about 100 students from all over Turkey, university students. I believe the last batch was over 30 different universities. They came and they spent one month with us studying English and also exploring the beauty in Tringanu. Uh, this is inland at the forest where we have the tropical rainforest and the bottom picture is at the coast. We have nothing but sandy coastline in Tringanu from top to bottom, something like 250 kilometers of sandy coastline. And we have turtles landing along the coast uh, right up until September. And so the students, when they come, they get to go and participate with the research that's done on turtle landings here and participate in cultural programs. Here is a image, a drawing of the hospital. We don't need this drawing anymore because the hospital is almost complete. We could take a picture of it today and you'd see the actual building and it's on the campus that I'm, I'm uh, speaking in right now. So that is a little bit about the university. And now I think if we have uh, questions or you need some more information or perhaps uh, Malik, if there's anything you want to add, Dr. Malik, about uh, anything that I've missed that you think is important to say about UNISA. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anwar and uh, Mr. Faris. And uh, I think you gave uh, information, detailed information about the university, but I would like to give my own experience as a foreigner and as a uh, foreign student first time i came to malaysia in 2013 as a student sorry uh, um, uh, i think yeah. it's more engaging right it's more so you want to speak you want to speak in your local language okay yeah. i would love to okay. yes. uh, Malaysia the auction of Hoklagella, Flagger Man, Uzumne, Malaysia Kiganam, and the Man Uzumne, Uzbek Stolik, Talabas Patuda, Tasrot Laram Night Bear Mokma, Man Kimi Unichin Childa, Malaysia Tourist Fat the Kiganam, Ushapet Sada, Man Bakarantura, Anglega Auction, Nia Turgandam, Lakin, Malaysia Kilip. Kerenganuga Kigan Kilganam Dankian, Unisa University Gekildam, Hamda Shur Dage, Academic Staff Lan, Hamda Tanishtem, E. Laboratoria, the Laboratoria Larga, or Tashrif Murdam, Hamda Uzum, Uila Burgan, Dr. Anturachin, Uila Burgan, Project in Malaysia. Uh, UNISA da oshirish imkoniyati uh, borligini tushunib yetdim. Boshqa tarafdan, masalan, uh, Angliyaga yoki boshqa joylarda uh, boshqa rivojlangan davlatlarda o'qibam, xuddi uh, shunday diplomni olishlaringiz mumkin. Uh, uh, Mr. Faris sizlarga tushuntirib ko'rsatib berdilar, qanchalik uh, uh, o'qishni uh, orasidagi farqni. Keyin turist bo'lib kelganimdan keyin hamma uh, dokumentlarimni Uje Malaysia ke uch chun top shardimda broad mudda tankiyan offer letter olib uje student bolib doktoran turan boshla gama Uzbekistonlik studentlar birinchi bolib zadan farklı taraflar shuki 
Plus'la bu yerde kış bölmeydi. Fakat ikta fasıl bor. Yani bittası yon bor fasıl. Hamda ikincisi kurgofçilik fasıl. Kurgofçilik fasıl yani umuman kurgofçilik de bölmeydi. Bazı yon bor yok duradın. Temperatura odası mutadil tahminen 35 26'dan 35 derece geçe özgür duradın. Kıyın boşka tarafı bu yerde Okşke kilgenler izde, eğer postgraduate levelge kilgenleriz, misalim var düşündür bu sile, köpçilik okşkeleriz, asosan research base, yani ilmi işke asoslangen boladı. Partini institutuya borup, ders tutmayızla, akademik sitoatlarını tutmayızla, fakat sözler izge berilgen proyektine, mesela magistratura, yoki doktorantura bu üçe berilgen proyektine okurge izgaz işler izgere boladı. Asosan işler iz, Uzları izni supervizorlar ile bir gəmal gəuşurlar. Yana da mənə etişi mümkün. Malaziya umuman cüdəyəm xaqsız. Demalol sayı xatqıl işlər izni mümkün. Talaba bolib Malaziyana xama cüylər gəbə orışlər izni mümkün. Malaziya atrofı cüdəyəm çıroylə orolla bilən orolgan. Suzu iş yoki boşqa su bilən boğuluq bulgan sporturlar ilə demalol işi bulan işlər izni mümkün. Yaşaş narxlarini agar O'zbekiston bilan solishtirib ko'radigan bo'lsak, taxminan O'zbekiston bilan taqqoslasa bo'ladi. Masalan, bu yerda O'zbekistonlik O'zbekistondagi, masalan, bizlarda mavsum paytida juda arzon bo'lib ketadi mevalar, lekin taxminan qish paytidagi mevalarni narxi bilan solishtirsalaringiz bo'ladi. Narxi o'shanda taxminan teng keladi. Bu ovqatlanish bo'yicha, yashash bo'yicha rental, nu rental ham taxminan O'zbekistondagicha bo'lsa bo'ladi. Taxminan 150-200 dolardan boşlab, masalan, əgər üniversitetdə, obşikəsdə, yotofxanasdə qoluşma xoqlamasaları, özləriz alaqı da uyu olub, icərəgə türüşləri mümkün. Yəni, bura savul bulsa, demələ, qolumdan ki, gəncə cavab yəramaq. Xalq, bəli ki, ki, əsələm əleykum. Qarın, mən özümə Malajidə oxu gəməndi, link oxu indi. İndi, biləz, link oxu indi, sayıbəl cəyə, qolun pürü gəqir rədi. Yarım soğutçu uzağlıydı. Bu Terengano'dan kanakı mesela Kolumpur'a katlan şey ile acı var. Avtobüsden mi yok? Kaç uzağlıydı? Hiç soğutlu yol şarkıdı. Tahminen Kola Lumpur'dan 450 km uzağda cöyleşken. Avtobüs, her konu bir neşte reis avtobüsler bu. Türlü su kampanyalarında yok ki maşinada yok ki samalyotta bir moral katlansa bulardı. Çünərli. Ok, so I got one more question about scholarship. Is there any scholarship for new students? Yeah, at the moment, we don't have any scholarships that we offer to students in general. We do have a special scholarship set up for students that are coming from Palestine. And we have over 30 students from Palestine. We offer them a 50% a scholarship to cover their tuition fees while they're here, provided they're living in Palestine and they're returning to Palestine. Outside of that, we don't have any scholarships, but you can see our postgraduate fees are actually very reasonable, one of the most reasonable fees in the country. And uh, the cost of living once you're here, especially in Tringanu where we are, is very affordable, very reasonable. And so there may be many students that are able to afford to fund themselves while they're here because the cost of living is very reasonable. Oh, thank you for your answer. Doc, uh, Mr. Fari, you got any questions? Yeah, I got a couple of questions, I think. Uh, the first one, uh, maybe Mr. Anwar can explain um, what are the, like, the most uh, popular program uh, at Uniza, your niche area. Uh, that's, that's our tough. That's a tough one to answer because yeah. we have those 11 faculties uh, all spread out that it's hard to say which one or what is our niche. But yeah. uh, the two largest faculties are the Faculty of Islamic Contemporary Studies and the Faculty of Economics and Management Sciences. And those mm -hmm. two faculties do have, in general, more students in them than other places. But in terms of international students, they can be found in every faculty. 
there is no there are there is no one or two faculties that they all gravitate to. Uh, they are in everything: faculty of languages, health sciences, um, mm -hmm. bio resources, informatics. They're every they're they're everywhere. They seem to go everywhere. Even the medical faculty and pharmacy, our latest faculty, they already have international students doing masters with them. Okay, that's that's quite, that's quite diverse. Yeah. I saw yeah. your uh, postgraduate fees is, is very affordable compared yes. to your And um, do you set any certain quota for the uh, medical or pharmacy related program for international students for postgraduate program? For postgraduate program, at, at the moment we don't have any quota. So we we we do not say, oh, we're only taking uh, ten percent or 5% uh, for postgraduate, it's open. The only limit that a student may experience is that we do not have a supervisor either in their area that they want to specialize in, in which case we will tell the student uh, quite frankly that um, uh, we don't have a, uh, someone that can supervise them. And we may recommend another university in Malaysia that has that expertise for them or we may have the supervisor, but they may already have reached their quota. They already have enough students that they cannot take on more students and provide quality education to that student. And so usually it's a short term thing. You wait six months and uh, a few students graduate from that supervisor and they can take on more. So for postgraduate, we don't have a quota. For undergraduate, there is a quota, 5% in any one program. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, for example, uh, MBBS, we have a small cohort in MBBS, 60 students every year. That means we can take in up to three international students per year in that program. That's, that's nice. Yeah, I think uh, one more regarding the uh, accommodation, let's say if the international student doesn't want to stay inside the campus, do you have like the... Uh, outside choices of apartments outside the campus? Yes, uh, we do not arrange or we do not have outside accommodation. So we do not have houses in the community that belong to the university that we then rent out to the students. The students will find their own accommodation in the community. Of course, our staff at the International Center will help if we know what's available to rent. Uh, we kind of put the two parties together. But so far, students seem to prefer to stay on campus because it's so convenient in terms of getting the class, meeting your supervisor, spending time in the library until late at night, and then just walking home. Food is also widely available on campus with many small restaurants operating at the hostel itself and throughout campus. And also right in front of campus, right at the front gate, in front of the mosque, there's McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut, Arab food, so many different things that you can just walk to on campus. But mm -hmm. for those that want to move off campus, so far we haven't heard of any problems in the sense of, we haven't had a student come to us to say that I cannot find accommodation. It seems like uh, the community is able to absorb anyone that's looking for rental. But it's not condominium. Condominiums are found downtown. In the area of the school here, it's mostly houses in, out in the community, which is, which is good because you will have a great experience meeting the local people, interacting mm -hmm. with the local people. Trunganu is a very safe place. It's a very easy place to get around. Maybe Dr. Malik, you can say something about that if you didn't already mention it. It's not a big city. We have approximately 500,000 people in the Kuala Trunganu, Kuala Nerus area where our university is. It, had a, it has all the modern amenities, but it is a village, relaxed, peaceful, easy place to be. Perhaps, Dr. Malik, anything you want to add about that? Uh, I already uh, talked about the rental and the student hostel in Uzbek. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. That's great. I think, uh, how many times have you, have you been to the islands, Dr.? Uh, I think the nearest one is uh, Kapas Island. I have been there about four times. 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that we can... every, every year. Yeah. <laughs> So that, does uh, UNISA plan to provide shuttle to, to, to the jetty? <laughs> no, no. Well, no, no need because it's so easy to get around here with grab and buses and everything. And it's, it's so uh, affordable to get to, to get to the island. Yeah, it's very nice because um, UNISA, the location wise is quite uh, attractive for the students who doesn't want you know, to stay in the hustle and bustle of the city center. So they can uh, study at UNISA at very affordable price for the postgraduate and undergraduate. And as per mentioned by Mr. Anwar earlier, the location also is quite uh, strategically located at the coastal area. Okay. And also um, easy access to the islands also. If the students uh, want to enjoy some break during the weekend or something, so it's just like step stones away. Yes, yes. So great places. And if you, if you don't go to the islands out of the sea, if you just travel inland 45 minutes, you're in the tropical rainforest with uh, Lake Kinyir, wild elephants, waterfalls in the jungle, all easy access for day trips. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And, and uh, just now you talk about the mobility program, right? Um, I think one of your mobility program also uh, focus on this uh, environmental and uh, nature aspects right? yeah our our english language program it yeah. is a mixture of studying english here but at the same time making sure that you get to explore all of tringanu from the very uh, top in the suit to the very bottom down in in Kamaman, and all the things it has to offer in the way of wildlife nature outdoors and culture traditional culture traditional architecture so you get a very rich experience while studying at the university. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anwar. I think uh, for the students from Uzbekistan also, you can also choose uh, UNISA to come um, to come to UNISA and, uh, you know, doing the, your uh, mobility program. I think in Uzbekistan, the summer break is uh, three months, right, uh, Mr. Ani? Uh, what about the yeah. summer break from uh, June until until September. September. Yeah. September, yeah. Yeah, so for the students who want to explore the rich experience of uh, living in Malaysia and explore beautiful rainforests, beautiful islands and everything, so uh, you can uh, do the English summer program in Riza. I think perhaps uh, next year, right, if everything goes well. Next year with EMGS, we'll get it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ne next year, ne next year, inshallah. Yeah, so we can work together with the uh, study point. Great, also, great. Yeah, for the uh, promotion of this program. I think, I think it's quite, uh, it will give like uh, good life experience for the students. Uh, yes. And, and also exploring nature and everything. And if we have students from Uzbekistan coming, we're going to get Dr. Malik to come and help out as well. Yeah, Dr. Malik can help out. No, if not mistaken, we have students from Uzbekistan, isn't it? Kazakhstan, yes. Students from Kazakhstan will, will come every year, yes. Okay, okay. By batch. Yes, by batch from several universities in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, okay. But we want, we want students from Uzbekistan next. Of course, they will Yeah, correct. Yeah. The students from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan came uh, by your MOU, right? University MOU with... Uh, uh, Yes, but it started, it started with the MOU, so it was just more uh, our international center uh, connecting with universities over there and then starting to send uh, teaching staff and students. And when the word spread, then more and more came year after year. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Otabek, do we have uh, any further questions from our viewers? Uh, so far, so clear. I, I gave all the questions already. So, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I think I think we can. Uh, it's about eight p.m. Okay, Isha after this. Yeah, I think. Uh, we can, yeah, we can uh, summarize here. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas, to have us, and it was so productive. I hopefully, and for useful for our future students. Inshallah from Uzbekistan. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate that. And 
Hürmetli followerle bugün de anakamızı webinarımızı uzun konusu gibi rahmet et doğruyla uçun, vaktiyle uçun. Okay. Thank you so much uh, Mr. Anwar and also Dr. Malik for your time to be with us here and uh, to help our viewers in uh, Uzbekistan to understand more about the university and about the study in Malaysia in general. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you so very much, much Paris for arranging this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.